Let me take the same points once again. You have this line AB. Coordinates of A are x1, y1. Coordinates of B are x2, y2. You have a point P which has coordinates x, comma y. Right? Now we know from the section formula that how you derive x is mx2 plus nx1 by m plus n. Right? Let's see if we can visualize this. Right? You have one straight line. Earlier when we understood section formula, we dropped perpendiculars and got these two triangles. Right? These two triangles are similar. Correct? So if AP is to PB is M is to N, this will also be M and this will be N, right? Similarly, the third side, this will be M and that will be N, right? Because these two are similar triangles, right? Now, let's draw some more lines and convert the triangles into rectangles, right? Let's add some more triangles and convert this into rectangles. Now, this is the figure we have. Let's try to now visualize what our section formula gave us. So in section formula, you have a term mx2. How can you see mx2 in this diagram? mx2 is nothing but the area of this large rectangle. This large rectangle is nothing but mx2. Why? Because this height is m and this length is x2, right? Because the x coordinate of point b is x2, right? So this is x2, this is m. So this is nothing but the area mx2, okay? Let's shade this. We have this area mx2. Now, we need to add another value to it. We need to add nx1, right? Here you see you're adding nx1. Can you visualize nx1 on this diagram? Can you visualize nx1 on this diagram? Area of this small rectangle is nothing but nx1, correct? Area of this small rectangle is nothing but nx1. Because this is n, this distance is n, and this is x1, correct? This is x1, which is nothing but the x-coordinate of point. So this rectangle is nx1. So now we'll shade this also, right? Because that is part of our Now you have this one large rectangle and this small rectangle. Now look at these two rectangles, right? This side is M and this side is N. Similarly for this rectangle, this side is M and this side is N. These two rectangles are actually one and the same. There's no difference, right? These two rectangles are actually one and the same, right? So instead of having an odd shaped figure, let's just move this rectangle here. If I move this rectangle here, now I have a very simple rectangle, right? So this term that I had in my numerator, mx2 plus nx1, is nothing but area of this rectangle, right? Very simple. This term is nothing but area of this rectangle. What is this rectangle? This rectangle is nothing but a simple rectangle which has length x. Length is x, right? Which is the x-coordinate of p. Length is x and breadth is m plus n, correct? Length is x and breadth is m plus n. And the area I know is mx2 plus nx1. Now, if I need to find out the length, what will I do? I'll divide the area by the breadth, right? I take m plus n, divide the area by it, I'll get the length. That's how you get x is mx2 plus nx1 by m plus n. This is a visualization. So now you've understood section formula completely, right? Just remembering that one formula does not mean knowing what section formula is, right? Does not mean knowing what it is. Does not mean you'll be able to solve application-based questions. You'll not be able to link it to physics. Now you've truly understood the concept, right? Because now, even without teaching you moment of force in physics, if I give you a problem, you'll be able to solve it because it's nothing but section formula, right? Similarly, if you knew the concept in physics, right? How to support planks, you'll automatically know section formula. All of these are one and the same, right? And that's how we need to learn the concept. Now we truly understand this concept, right? We understand what the application is, right? Which is planks with different weight and supporting them, right? Fulcrums and supports. We understand variably what is the formula that actually represents this? How do you calculate the value of the support? We understand it diagrammatically, right? It is nothing but the area of this rectangle, right? What it is representing is nothing but area of this rectangle. And finally, when we solve problems, what we are going to do is use numbers, right? Instead of these specific points, x generic points x1, y1 or x2, y2 that we had, when we solve a problem, we'll have specific values for this, right? Each of these x1, y1, x2, y2, all of them will have specific numbers, right? So once we solve problems where we use specific numbers, you would have completed the concept in all possible ways, right? Now you completely understand section formula. You don't need to mug up anything, right? You truly understand the concept. Let's see if we can now solve a problem. 